Back for what purposes Ms. Scanlon seek recognition? Mr. Chairman, I move to strike the last word. Gentlelady is recognized. I, I do want to respond first to Mr. Gomer, and I'm sorry that he and many of his colleagues didn't think it was important enough to be here today. But I did want to respond to his allegation that Philadelphia's homicide well, rate the lady is yields, no. I will so not. I, can I will why not I yield. Get there while my the gentle lady does, does not yield. Is mine. The gentle lady does not yield. The time is hers. I waited. For I wanted hours. to respond. Gentle lady does not yield. I wanted to respond to Mr. Gomert's allegation that Philadelphia's homicide rate is the fault of Democratic leadership in that city. Apparently, he doesn't understand that the Commonwealth's Republican legislature for decades has blocked city leadership from passing the types of common sense gun safety laws we are considering today. So to the broader question, like most Americans, I am sickened and sick to death of the gun carnage we experience in this country every single day. I will not sit idly by watching preventable tragedies play out over and over again, day after day, year after year whether the children and teachers slaughtered in Texas last week, the community members murdered in Tulsa last night or Buffalo the week before, or the more than a dozen people gunned down in Philadelphia during the Memorial Day weekend. In cities and towns across the country, we are mourning too many people whose lives have been cut short, including children whose lives had barely begun. We are not helpless here. We can change this. We can pass gun violence prevention laws that are constitutional and save lives. All it takes is political courage, a willingness to put Americans' lives above gunmaker profits. Over two decades ago, after the Columbine shooting, I rejected helplessness and hopelessness to organize members of my community to join the Million Mom March here in DC. Since then, I've supported groups like Moms Demand Action for Gun Safety and Ceasefire PA and candidates who are willing to advocate for gun safety laws. And in 2018, I came to Congress along with many of my colleagues sent here by our constituents to pass common sense gun violence prevention legislation. And I'm not alone. The majority of my constituents and fellow Americans have decided enough is enough as well. They are demanding action from federal and state lawmakers. Gun violence is a big, multifaceted problem, but doing nothing is not a solution. The profits of gun manufacturers cannot be worth more than the lives of our children, our neighbors, our teachers, our doctors, our seniors. The Protecting Our Kids Act will address some of the key enabling conditions for gun violence and make changes that are constitutional, that will make America safer, and that are supported by law enforcement. This is not about repealing the Second Amendment or taking away the guns of responsible gun owners. I want to echo Mr. Deutsch in reminding our colleagues of Justice Scalia's opinion in Heller, in which he said that like the other rights secured by the Bill of Rights, the right secured by the Second Amendment is not without limits. Or as other justices have noted, the Constitution is not a suicide pact. This bill before us is not about being pro-gun or anti-gun. It's about desperately needing to stop gun violence. To my colleagues who oppose each and every common sense gun safety measure, do not insult Americans, our children, our teachers, or the memory of all those we have lost by offering thoughts and prayers with no action. Year after year, decade after decade, as the Bible tells us, faith without works is dead, and we are here to work. Do not insult Americans by offering hollow solutions like turning schools into armed fortresses when you won't spend the money to remove asbestos or lead from those schools. Do not insult Americans by advocating to arm teachers and guidance counselors and librarians when many of our schools don't have enough money to hire guidance counselors or librarians or enough teachers. And do not insult Americans by saying that fortifying schools is the solution when our children and the rest of us have to face the prospect of gunfire on the way to or from school and work or the supermarket or the hospital or the movie theater or our churches, mosques, and synagogues. I refuse to tell our children there's nothing we can do, that they must be sacrificial lambs to a twisted theory of armed Second Amendment liberty that is decoupled from personal responsibility. Our children know as well as we do that something can be done. We know it in our guts. Our children deserve to learn and grow in safety, and we have the power to give our kids a more hopeful and bright future. 
This weekend, America's National Youth Poet, Poet Laureate, Amanda Gorman, offered us a hymn in which she says, may we choose our children over chaos, may another innocent never be lost. Mr. Chair, I yield back. Gentlelady yields back. For what purpose does Mr. Johnson of Louisiana seek recognition?